Welcome to the video that is going to change your life. Not really. Today we're going to talk about Big O notation, the most exciting topic in the world of computer science. Ah, it's so boring. So what is Big O notation? It basically means, hey, your algorithm has bad time complexity. No, your algorithm is garbage and slow as a snail. Meaning it can measure the efficiency and the performance of your algorithm using time and space complexities. Now in case you are wondering, yes, there are different approaches to solving a single problem using algorithms as we discussed in our previous video. And using big O notation, you can figure out which approach will make your interviewer the happiest. So if you're preparing for an interview, big O notation is the ultimate buzzword. Use it as much as possible and you'll sound like a pro while explaining your algorithm to your interviewer. So let's take a simple example of what I mean by that. So I'm going to write a simple code over here, const funny number. So it will take an array as an input and it will say for, I'm going to run a for loop till length of the array like that. And if i equals three, then we're going to return array of i, right? Simple. Now we're gonna take an array and give this some numbers over here. And now we're gonna console log this code. Let's see if this works. Oh, sorry, it was called nums. And now I'm gonna try to run this node script.js and yep, we get our output. Cool, so what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna try, try to measure how much time this takes. So I'm gonna say console.time and I'm gonna give this uh, anything between this. I'm just gonna give this thing over here, find number, and it basically will help us measure how much time it takes. So time end. So time taken in executing this line over here. Okay, I'm gonna run this again. And it takes around 5.2 milliseconds. Okay, fine. Now I'm gonna try to run another code. So I'll just comment this out and write below this. Instead of writing all of this, I'm just going to simply say return array of three. And now let's try to run this again. Hmm. So you see, we get less amount of time taken by this code over here. Why is that? Why was that the case? So it's because we are using a for loop over here. And in this case, we are not using any loop and we are just directly returning the number. So it's because in this case, we're taking this for loop over here and we are looping through each and every element of this array, right? So we're saying if zero equals three, which is not the case, so don't return anything. Then we're saying if one equals three, that's not the case. So we're iterating through until we find the third position and then we are returning the array, right? So it's taking more amount of time to do the same thing. But in this case, it's just returning array of three without any other operation. So that is why this is taking less amount of time than this code over here. So that's why we can say that this code over here is better than the previous code. But is it the right way to measure a time complexity of an algorithm? Because again, it will depend on machine to machine how fast this particular code or this particular code will be executed, right? So I don't think this is the right way to measure, even though this did give us the time and comparison between these two, but we can't really be sure how much time this algorithm will take in some other computer, right? So what do we use? We will need some other metric to judge an algorithm how good or how bad it is. So what we can do is we can use operations to measure the efficiency of an algorithm. So what, what is this operations exactly? So operation basically means how many tasks an algorithm is performing. So in this case, see, this is running a for loop. So a ta what, what is a task exactly? So this can be a task. This is comparing it with three and then returning this array. This can be a one task also over here. It's running this loop each and every time. So this task is being run how many times? However times this for loop is being run, right? So in this case, this for loop was being run, including zero, four times. So this over here has four operations. But in this case, as you can see, we are just returning this array of three. So this here just have one operation. So this is how we can measure if an algorithm is efficient or not. Let's take another example. So I'm going to comment this one out. So let's take this for example. So over here, we can see this function is called sum operations. And if we, let's say console log this with, I don't know, two, and then try to run it, we get seven. And this thing has how many operations? This one, 
two and three operations right it's performing three operations so let, let's say this has three operations but what if we provide like what if we change this n if we provide let's say five instead of two and then we run this again it will still have three operations right it doesn't change the fact that is only performing three operation it doesn't matter how big the number is even if it's 1000 it's still going to perform only three operations so this algorithm will take same amount of time with each and every call right now compare it with this code over here. so this basically what it's doing is it's taking n as an input and first it's looping through it from 0 to n and then when it reaches the end it's going to loop through from n minus 1 to 0 right now if you try to run this notice if we provide this with 2 so see so let's see how many operations are going on over here so first of all it's running this console log going forward this is first operation then it's running this for loop from 0 1 like it's till 2 right that is what our input is so one operation two three operations up until now then fourth operation then it's again running a loop from two to zero so again two more operations six and then seventh console log at the end and you can count it over here as well one two three four five six seven so it's totally performing seven operations okay yeah that's fine but see notice when we change it to three and then try to run it again number of operations changed now earlier it was taking seven when in case of two as an input now it's taking one two three four five six seven eight nine operations so it's changing with respect to this input over here so it does not have a constant operation so it will depend on this n so if i let's say provide this 1000 then it will perform 1000 operations and obviously that will take more amount of time so this will have so it will run this once this once so 2n plus it it has these three operations as well so this has 2n plus 3 operations every time this L, this code runs so it's dependent on this n for its number of operations so see now it got so much easier to know which code is good and which code is bad so you might be thinking but how is big o notation related to this well it's exactly related to this itself because if a code has constant operations that is O of one time complexity, big O of one time complexity. And this is exactly what big O is. If the code has a constant number of operations every time, doesn't matter if it's three, four hundred, if the input changes, but it still have same number of operations, then it's always going to be O of one. But in this case, this has two N plus three operation that it's changing with respect to N. So this will have O of n time complexity because it's related to n and it's increasing as the n is increasing and one more thing to keep in mind it's increasing in a constant way like it's not like that if we provide n to 5 it's going to be increasing in 25 like it's not increasing in exponential way right it's increasing in a constant way so when the number of operation looks something like this we're gonna ditch this 3 and this 2 and we're just gonna take the n over here so this will always have o of n time complexity now let's go back to our previous example where we are doing a same thing by using two different codes. Now you can see over here, this operations changes with respect to the array. Now between both of these codes, you can obviously say that O of 1 has a better time complexity than O of n because it's taking less amount of time to do something. Now there are more types of time complexity. Now let's take another example of one more time complexity. So I'm just gonna comment this out. Now I'm gonna take this code over here which is called print both and we're providing n to it and inside of it what's going on is it's running a loop from 0 to n and then inside of that loop we're running a, another loop for j as well for 0 to n so let's see let's try to run this so if i say oh we haven't called this print both and let's say i provide n as 2 now if we try to run this so you see it's gonna run and it ran four times so if we provided the input as 2, it ran 4 times. But what if we provide input as 3? It runs 9 times. What if we provide input as 4? So how many operations does this code have? This has n into n operations, which is an exponential operation. It's not getting increased in a constant time like this algorithm was. It is being increased with in exponential manner. So this has, so instead of n into n, we can write n 
square operations. So this will have time complexity of O n square. So as I mentioned before, if we have any constants, we're going to ditch that and take just the n. But this doesn't have any constant. Like if, if, we, if this were to have, let's say, plus 3 as well, we would have ditched this plus 3 and just would have taken this n square. So this has n square of time complexity. And this is a bad time complexity when it comes to algorithms. So I know this might be a little bit confusing to you, but let me just show you and clear this out visually for you. So I'm going to go to Google real quick. And I'm going to search time complexity chart. Yep, here it is. So let's just zoom it in. So now you can see we discussed about O of 1, right? So O of 1 is a constant time complexity that it doesn't changes with any amount of input, right? So this, as you can see, it's a straight line with respect to operations and elements. It doesn't increase the operation every time we change the elements. But in case of O of n, it's increasing consistently and slowly. But if you compare it with O of n square, as you may remember, if the n was 2, it was 4. If n was 3, it was 9. It, if it n was 4, it was 16. So this was being increased in an exponential way. So as you can see, this comes into this red zone, which is a horrible zone. So this is an exponential time complexity. But if your algorithm is O of n or O of 1, it, it has a good time complexity. Now ignore these n log n log n and all of these time complexities for now. We are going to discuss that as we move forward in our DSA course. Usually n log n and log n are time complexities of a lot of sorting and searching algorithms. But we're not going to discuss that right now because it might get a little confusing for you. So for now, to understand time complexity, I wanted to take three simple examples of O of 1, O of n, and O of n square. And this is what basically big O notation is when it comes to time complexity. So now let's move on to space complexity. Now what is it exactly? So space complexity is the amount of memory an algorithm needs to run. And it is also measured in big O notation. So what do I mean by space or memory? So whenever we declare these variables like in string, array, etc., these take some amount of memory, right? So that is exactly what space complexity is. And with respect to an algorithm, as the input size increases, so does the space complexity. And it's important to keep in mind that space complexity is not just about the size of the input, but also about the size of the algorithm itself and any additional data structure used. So I know it might be a little bit confusing. Let, let's take a quick example and see what do I mean by that. Over here, I've taken this funny number code again. And over here, what's basically happening is we have declared this sum variable, which is zero initial. And we run a loop from zero to array dot length. And we are providing it this an array as an input, right? So every time this adds something to this sum, first 420, then 96, 12, and whatever it is, it's going to pro return us this sum of all of these in the very end. So I'm going to try to run this now. And as you can see, we get this 674 as an output. Cool. Now I'm going to take another example. Let me just comment this out and take another example over here called funny number array. Now over here, we're providing it as an input like let's say 5. And then what's happening is we're declaring an array inside of it. And then and we're looping through from 0 to n. And in every iteration, we're pushing something to the array. We're pushing i into 69 to this array over here and then returning the final array. So if I try to run this now, it provides us this output. So now I want you to think, what do, you, oops. Let me just bring this back and now try to run this. Now, did you notice something? When we discuss in time complexity, we discuss that if we provide some input and if the operations remain constant with every single input, then it has a good time complexity. So. But if it changes with respect to the input, it has a bad time complexity. I'm guessing you would be able to know which one of these has a good space complexity and bad time space complexity. So let's see. And this one doesn't matter what the size of the array is. It will only going to return us one single thing and one single some variable. But in this case, as this number grows, if it's 5, if it's 50, then grows the size of this array as well. And we're not discussing about the time complexity. Don't worry about this for loop and all of these things. Just focus on the size. In this case, this just returns us one single variable with one single value. But in this case, it returns us an array 
which has a dynamic value every time this input changes. Now to better understand this, I need to explain you something. Now when it comes to JavaScript, we have the following primitive types of variables. So boolean or number or undefined or null. We have these and we also have things like strings, arrays, objects, etc. So these types have always have the constant space complexity. But these, what, what have I written over here? String. But these have dynamic space complexity. So it might change with respect to the input size. It's because string has a length property, arrays has a length property, objects has keys as multiple, you know, different entities inside of object. But when it comes to these, these just have one single thing inside of them, right? So that is why this code had O of one space complexity while this code had O of n space complexity because it's changing with respect to n but this is again not exponential so it's just related to this n right this has so if the input n is 5 it's going to return us 5 items inside of this array so this has O of n that is so the input is 5 and the output is also 5 elements in the array so this has o of n space complexity and even if the input was 5 and if it was giving us n plus 3 or something like that elements in the array it would still be considered o of n time uh, sorry space complexity now you might be thinking that uh, there must be some n, o n square space complexity as well right yep let's take an example for that as well so if i just uh, take a simple code over here you don't need to understand this code for now now if i try to run this one you're going to notice the input is 5 but it's creating an array which has a size of 10 but if the input was let's say 10 then it's creating an array with 100 elements so this right over here has o of n square space complexity let's understand how so over here we're taking an empty matrix right and then we're running a for loop from 0 to n then inside of it we're taking another matrix so this matrix looks something like this and this is the first child so for the first child it goes to i equals 0 and then it's creating another array inside of this array so it's having multiple arrays over here and then here it's performing operations and it's assigning items to this 1 comma 2 comma 3 let's let's take a simple example and then again for this and then again for this so it's not like if the input is 10, it's giving us 10 or 15 or 20 output, right? It's giving us exponential output. For 10, it's giving us 100. So that's why it has n square time complexity because 10 into 10 is 100, right? So n square time complexity. Now, all of these examples are just to give you some minor idea on what space and time complexity is so that you can calculate your own time and space complexity for now. But as we'll move forward in this course, I'm going to discuss so many different types of coding problems and algorithms and explain time and space complexity for each and every single one of them. And also, if you've not yet accessed the complete playlist for this DSA course, just click the link in the description down below or I button above to access the complete playlist. Also, like this video if you found this helpful in your journey of learning data structures with JavaScript.